I just wanted to, uh, while Ariel is, is kind of getting himself ready, um, I just wanted to thank a few people for our research trip to the Moray Firth. Firstly, Mark, who really was the person who suggested that the Moray Firth was a place that we should go uh, in order to um, encounter the bottomless dolphins that live there. Uh, and also Professor Paul Thompson and his team at the Lighthouse Field Research Station, which is part of the University of Aberdeen, who welcomed us very warmly and told us about their research monitoring the impact of different environmental changes on the cetaceans in the area. Um, and also a chap called Charlie Phillips, who seems to stand at the point near where we were staying every day to interpret the dolphins for tourists and local people. Um, and he's part of the Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society. And, uh, and Ariel's team, who have been with us during the week, uh, Alejandro and Emilio, have been just fantastic. And it's been really a great week, and I hope the start of something. So Ariel, uh, Ariel is uh, an artist, he's a musician, and he's an inventor. He designs and makes resonance instruments which are used to enable interaction between human beings and nature through sensation and emotion. And his uh, artwork he creates installations and performances. He's currently representing Mexico at the Venice Biennale. And uh, so if anyone gets a chance to go out to Venice to uh, see his wonderful installation there in Venice. He's the director of the Nature Expression and Resonance Research Laboratory, which has been going for 25 years. For the last 10 years, he's concentrated his efforts in searching for a way to communicate with cetaceans. And with his team, with his collaborators, he's undertaken several expeditions to contact grey whales and bottlenose dolphins off the coast of Baja, California, and now off the Moray Firth. In 2007, he completed the construction of the first prototype of an underwater capsule, Nereida, which is a musical instrument to interact with cetaceans. I'm going to leave the rest to Ariel to tell you about his work. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola, and all the team of the Arts Catalyst for this invitation. Um, as Nicola said, I part of the Nature Expression and Resonance Research Laboratory. Um, first of all, uh, English is not my, my, my language. I hope my English is enough to, to communicate with humans. And um, I, will, I will make my, my best effort to express. Uh, it's impossible to, for me to talk about this project that is uh, in a transition from a very intimate uh, work to, to the possibility of sharing for, in this critical moment, sharing for conscience and conservation efforts. It's impossible for me to talk about that without uh, some bit of a very personal introduction of, of this work. Uh, this work, the origin of this work is since is very far when I was a child. Uh, it has to be with some impromptation, some aspects of, of my early years, uh, trying to contact with others. You know? the, the word others, in this case, uh, would like to use it in a very extensive uh, significance. Others as much others as possible. Uh, that was my, my, one of my first in intentions. And the, the way to, to reach that in my dreams was, well, I, re I was very close to, to, to science fiction, and very close to thinking about uh, building spaceships for going very far and to try then to contact with those others no, that are absolutely different and, and that if suddenly happens that we have a cross of, of looks or of, 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 uh, uh, face 
uh, and then we are reaching something and it's universal and that's a lot of significance for me. We work a lot of time, well, I design instruments. The, the main uh, point of these instruments, the main uh, root of the construction of these instruments is resonance. I think that uh, resonance is the physical uh, characteristic of that, that has to be with, with um, empathy, with communication, with love in a, in a kind of universal way. You know, resonance as a, as a language of, or as a very, very basic form of interaction or contact. This instrument, the one we are hearing, is the plasma mirror. And uh, our, our first work was with plants. Those plants in this installation are connected through electrodes to obtain basic, very basic electro, electrochemical signals and trying to convert them not with scientific pretensions but with symbolic pretensions but uh, technically strict to, to expression, expression of plants. This installation is called a uh, concert for plants. It's a concert that is from a Mexican plant. It's concert intended to be the music of that plant to other plants. You know? um, after this, well, we also work with a smaller version for making that installation for living plants in their, in their, in their environments without human uh, public. And uh, also the deserts, because deserts is a very important uh, part of my work and my inspiration. Uh, working with the with expression of the environment by itself. The sun, the position of the clouds, the, the wind, etc. Uh, as a way of um, yeah, a, more, a bit more than 10 years ago, I understood that, that maybe the main representation of a being that is, uh, has the qualities or the, uh, is the, tools, no? the virtues uh, that are uh, that make an illusion to contact with are whales and dolphins. <coughs> whales and dolphins uh, represent uh, in the collective imaginary and in my own experience beings of extreme conscience, extreme spiritual force, memory, knowledge, wisdom. And, uh, and they have a special virtue that it's very interesting for like a point of encounter. The Sipatians, as Mark said, express by sound and see by sound. There is a circular, uh, no boundary, uh, no specific boundary universe where your expression reveals the nature of what's, what's around you. And that's a, that's a point, yeah, that's a pressure for, for me in this research because the, the aspect that, that your, your way of expression is expressed out of your mind in a physical way reveals a lot of things. You know? I am sure that, that that vision, that perception is something that we create. We create with our we were, we were with, with our experience, with, with our memories. No? We don't, when we, when we breathe, we don't born with all the ability of, per, of, of perception. Perception is a part, it's mainly something that is learned. And then those deep water people that express for for seeing are transmitting their ways to see, are transmitting their, their experience, even a, a, a tablet experience. You know? I'm sure that the, 
sonar. So I, I think that the echolocalization system is a very limited expression. The, the mind expression for seeing the world is a reflect also of, of the way of seeing the deep conscience. And I am sure that the nature of those expressions in uh, all the spam web, for example, is different from a young one. So, um, this is like the, um, the, the basic approach to them. So, what, what would be the way to, to reach them without uh, breaking some ethical and some basic uh, aspects that uh, we, are, we are reaching into their world reach them because the sound that we that they work with we don't live with is underwater obviously. How to reach that 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 sound and how to to make some instruments or tools to subtly communicate with them without disturbing. You know? And then we we make we have a, a research instrument a complex research instrumentation. Uh, we are interested in in the spectrums, the frequencies, the amount of energy that is in the sea, that is, that is in the wall of the, of the cetaceans, that is um, the invasive uh, aspects of our own noise in the, in the ocean. And uh, we, we try to, to sustain these very meticulous rules to try to make instruments that represent a kind of communication. What would what would be what would happen if we reach communication with them? Um, I think that we the first the, the main part of this of this uh, project is to create a context. We think that uh, we, we are not we were we were not if we do not define ourselves as scientists. We are not looking for explaining things or for understanding their language. We are trying to make an empathy with them. So um, the way to 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 reach them, to reach them is to create something that we can name as a meta language. You know? We built a first instrument called the Nereida capsule, based in some hypothesis of, of their communication and the, and the possibility. And that instrument is, a, is an instrument, it's a resonance instrument that, in first instance, have by itself a significant significance. It's, a, it's an instrument we construct by basing a, in a, it's a quartz, a fused quartz capsule. It's a, a, it's a cylinder, hollow cylinder of quartz that uh, goes into the sea and uh, passively stays there, stays there and uh, has several characteristics. First of all, its nature, its quartz crystal, and its hollow. Then, it's a shine object for sound. It's an object that its nature is is uh, very harmonic. The echo of of this instrument, when you look at it through sound, is very very harmonic. Then it represents a term that we can we can uh, define as shine, a shine object, a bright object. Also, it has inside some uh, very tense strings. It's an instrument. It has tense strings, high tension strings, and those strings are harmonically tuned. Then they they reverberate. They have they they, they generate some echo. 
then uh, we suppose that the, that echo can have a meaning, a meaning of space. You know? It's a bright, a bright object that has space inside. And then the harmonics of the instrument are uh, a kind of order of harmonic. Harmon we are sure that harmony, harmonics are a, 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 universe, a universal aspect of physics, okay? and nature. Then the harmonic tuning of the instruments is a subtle intent of bringing an exp our expression of harmony in this instrument. Um, there are also some other uh, more sophisticated elaborations of the experiments based in the entropy and the sea, and the chaos of the sea. And um, we, what we, what we, what we pretend is to, to create that context I told about it. About it and to try to make a sustained experiment of interaction with cetaceans never in cultivary, ever in their environment with a very discreet uh, participation of us and uh, to try to create a context in which with time, with preserving intention and preserving uh, a humble work with them and with those experiments, we can say them, we want to contact you. And uh, it's not uh, intended to be a, a repeat a science experiment. We don't perceive science is related to, to justice now. And uh, I, I think that uh, the scientific world, and the scientific um, divulgation is maybe on the media, is maybe not the main uh, way to live to the divulgation of our project, but the community experience. No? In the future, if this goes on, we want to make a, a little station of uh, communication with cetaceans in an horizontal point of view. You know? uh, we are a civilization, they are a civilization. We, are, we have to admit that we are in a strong unilateral war against them. And then we have to make some, something, even humble and simple intents, to create conscience. You know? We think that this particular Affect, uh, uh, approach is in the affective, in the affective uh, aspect. Um, it can have different kinds of, of um, products about it. Uh, the arts, the art products, the recordings, and also some apportations to, 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 to science, but uh, ever preserving the, the idea of a humble intention of contact them. I think that with our experience, at that, we have uh, some some experience with all this research. We have some experience, not a lot of experience. We work a lot with with, with them. We're trying to approach, but the main real experience of interchange, they are not not very not much. But, uh, but, but they are uh, full of significance no? for us. They, they, uh, learn, they are, uh, show us that, uh, that there is a possibility of, of contacting them, of sustaining them, and then to try to make a, a platform of an aesthetic uh, element to to work, to work with, uh, with, with situation.
We are hearing Nereida's capsule in this sound. It's using a very tiny microphone inside it. The sounds are very, very subtle. There are the strings responding to echolocation pulse, pulses, uh, pulsations of uh, sperm wells. It's an experiment that is illustrated here in this It's an experiment that uh, has to be with, with entropy, with the possibility of finding uh, some kind of, uh, of language in the infinite universe of, of, uh, of scraps of, of quiet noise that, that are in, in the sea. The experience with Nereida capsule is uh, is in the is, is now in the field of the symbolic. We are we want to make uh, we are in construction of a little ship that is called the Nereida, the Narcissus ship, and uh, that has evolution in design in several several stages, and it's a it's a ship that has the instrument in work, what is related to the possibility of being there. It's, it has not a motor, it has a, it's a derivating machine, it's like a subaquatic instrument. It, uh, now we're building it using a big tank that we found in a, in a metal junk uh, store. And uh, the idea of this, of this, this ship is to lose, to be able to lose, to follow the, the rules of the sea, the currents of the sea, and to have these instruments on board, and to be able to create that context. I mean, to be able to, to, to stay, to, to, be, to overcome all the, the logistics and all the, the incidental aspects of contact. Just be there to be able to sleep, to be able to, 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 to be, to pass for all the states of uh, needed to, to adapt, of, of scare, of awareness, of sleeping, of everything. And then to stay, this is the, the drawing of, of the final version of the, of the, of the ship. It's a very simple uh, capsule, it's like a kind of cone or nest where we as humans can stay, one or two person, for long staying with, with the instruments uh, aboard. That's a brief introduction of, of this project. Uh, I would like to follow, if you're interested, for some specific questions. Uh, for be sure that we are going in the web communication. <laughs> yes, we have a, a laboratory. We have a, a base. We are based in Mexico City and in Baja California. We, in Mexico, we, con we make the construction of the, of the instruments. And in Baja California, we have the laboratory of analysis we are, we are working in the analysis of of the signals of the sea and uh, this this image is very significant because uh, one of the main uh, interesting points of trying to develop a possible a possible uh, base of aesthetical communication with cetaceans uh, it's based on a uh, fact that it's, it seems interesting that they, as, as Mark expressed, they, they have some uh, um, physiologic abilities to, to, to whistle, to sing, but there are also some aspects in the heads, in the nails, to generate very, very tiny, high energy pulsations. 
if you analyze, like in this photograph, you analyze that pulses, but they are very short in time, very high in energy. It, it really makes me the impression that, uh, especially with, with sperm whales, that is a species that is species that is very impressive to me. Uh, it makes the impression that that uh, way of communication and of vision, the clicks, those potent, very potent clicks of the sperm whales that are one of the most intense in energy expressions of animal beings. It's very short in time, it's very square in its, in its shape of energy and then it's full of uh, harmonic information. Then we think that uh, maybe there are also testimonies of, of, of this, uh, these are accusations of the, of the sperm whales. There are some registers of them in groups, that are daisy flower in groups, talking by talking they, 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 themselves by using of those, those keys. It's a strange approach of an um, echo language that it's not uh, it's not um, the expression let me try let me try explain the expression is not in the domain of time. When we walk, when we walk, when we talk we express, we articulate our vibration, our expression in the domain of time. The messages construct through time. It's very particularly interesting for me that the they clicks are more related to the universe of frequency. You cannot measure a lot of things in time when we hear those clicks. But we, when, when we analyze them in the spectrum aspect, we can, we can understand that the richness of the expression and the, the response from the external universe is related to the universe of frequency. Then we are in front of a, a being that, uh, that is maybe a door to uh, to understanding another kind of language in a very deep and significant for us, at least for us. That doesn't happen in time, what happens is happening in the mathemat mathematically speaking in the inverse of time, that is the uh, spectrum. And for finishing, uh, for questions, uh, that, that work, the, the condensation of this work, an instrument that is now in the uh, in Earth, and now it's in a church in Venice, in, in the Genal. It's, uh, it's a maduration of this, of this project. It's inspiring that aspect of the expression of uh, uh, sound derivated from, from the spectrum not for the time. It's a huge instrument that it's the, as the preliminary uh, prototype of a solar aquatic instrument. And uh, it's, it's uh, for its construction, it's, uh, we have to, to make, we made in Germany the only factory that, is that has the possibility to do it, we, we develop a huge cylinder of pure quartz, you know, that, that very, very shiny object that, um, that, I, that is able to, to represent, to, co to concentrate, not only because of its material, but, but also because, because of its shape, to, to, receive, to receive signals and to express them as an, as an echo signals. Well, uh, Alejandro will show you 
and Emilio will show you some sounds and some images of what we are working in the Baja California Peninsula. That is a, a very special, a very important place for Circassians in, in the world. I would like to know if you have some questions. 